In this video, I'm going to show you a simple, intuitive way to test the assumption of homoscedasticity. I'm going to use SPSS to do it, but you could do this type of analysis in any piece of software that would allow you to estimate residuals, predicted values, and a correlation. So in this example, I've got earnings as the dependent variable and education and IQ as the independent variables. And I can conduct the analysis by going into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and put ed earnings into the dependent variable box and education and IQ in the independent variables box. Now, it seems like I'm carrying out the multiple regression, and I am. But in order to test homoscedasticity, I need a couple of variables. So click on Save. And then click on Residuals, and you want the standardized residuals. And you also want the standardized predicted values. And then click on o Continue, and click OK. And SPSS has created two variables for me called ZPR for predicted underscore one and ZRE for residual underscore one. Now I need to transform the residual variable into absolute values. So I need to get rid of the negative values here. So to do that, click on transform, compute, and write something like ABS ZRE underscore one. And to get that function, click ABS, open the parentheses, and put ZRE in there, and then close the parentheses, click OK, and SPSS has created a new variable called absolute standardized residual underscore one. Now I just need to estimate the association between the predicted values and the residuals. When homoscedasticity is satisfied, there will be a non-significant association between the predicted values and the residuals, or the absolute residuals, which implies that the multiple regression equation is working equally well across the whole continuum of the independent variables. So to look at that, click on Analyze, Correlate, Bivariate. We want the association between the predicted values, standardized, and the absolute residuals. And we also want Pearson and Spearman, because the distributions might not be normally distributed. And I would say that if either the Pearson or the Spearman is statistically significant, then you would have evidence for heteroscedasticity. Click on OK, and here is the association as a Pearson correlation, 0.173, and it's statistically significant. So this is suggesting that I have not satisfied the homoscedasticity assumption. Instead, what I have is evidence for heteroscedasticity, and regression assumes that I don't have heteroscedasticity. So this is a problem. Based on the Spearman correlation, I'm also getting a very similar correlation, and it's also statistically significant. Again, this is evidence for not satisfying the assumption of homoscedasticity. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a scatter plot just to look at the effect visually. So I'm going to put predicted values in the x-axis and the absolute residuals into y-axis and click OK. And here is the scatter plot. I'm just going to get rid of the lines. And I'm also going to add a line of best fit. And I'm going to get rid of the label added to the line. And there we go. And so this is what the scatter plot looks like. So there is an upward sloping trend associated with the standardized predicted value and the absolute residuals. And so this is suggesting that as the predicted values of earnings increase, the magnitude of the error in prediction is also increasing. And this can't be true for a, a regression analysis because the regression equation and the statistics associated with it assume that the amount of error, the amount of misprediction, is equal across the whole continuum of the predictive equation. And so I have a correlation here, a positive upward sloping one, which is violating that assumption. In the advanced topics of the chapter, I present a couple of ways of dealing with this problem if you observe it and it's called the wild bootstrap method and there's also a Hayes and Chi adjusted standard errors approach or corrected standard errors that can be used as well.